Hey everybody, how's it going? So we're at the desktop, and you know when we're at the desktop, it's gonna get serious. Anyway, it's been a while since I've done a tutorial, and I really do kind of miss doing them. And, you know, we tend to get sidetracked by other things, the shiny things and whatnot. And I want to show you guys this really cool snare mixing technique I picked up from my friend Spencer Satello on my last visit to Las Vegas. So I've dropped by Spencer's place a couple of times in the last year, and, you know, he always shows me what he's working on, and I always get blown away by the snare sounds he's got. And he says the trick to it is this old Neve unit called uh, the RMX-16. The only problem is, you know, they don't make them anymore, not in the rack unit version anyway, and uh, they go for a lot of money. This one here I just found on eBay is going for $6,000 U.S. dollars. Not exactly cheap. Apparently, they make a 500 series version, but it doesn't quite do the same thing. And, you know, that's kind of disappointing. So on my last visit to his studio, I was asking him if he had ever come across any kind of way in software to recreate what he does. Because what happens is he'll send the snare out to the Neve unit and clip it on the way in. And that's how you get that explosive 80s snare sound. So we've been kind of going back and forth, you know, trying to figure out what works and whatnot. And I think I might have found something to get a facsimile type sound. So this is one of the latest mixes I've been doing. I use it on the Tonex shoot. I'm really happy with how it turns out and I am getting kind of an exploding kind of snare because I've got uh, the snare track going through a drummer DL241 and I am just clipping the hell out of it on the way out and it's not bad It doesn't have quite that big booming kind of thing Spencer's getting. So I'm like, okay, what can we do? So this is what I came up with. I started messing around with a bunch of different snare reverbs. And I'm like, for the most part, I've been using the Valhalla plate. I know a lot of guys have been using the Valhalla plate. You know, this is a great reverb. I really like the sound of it. It doesn't really cost all that much. I've been using it on a bunch of mixes. It does the thing. It's really quite nice. I got it set for a vocal, but hey, it works pretty good on a snare. But then again, it doesn't have that insane kind of 80s gate thing going on uh, that Spencer's getting. That's for sure. Uh, certainly not with that $5,000 unit he's got. However, I was messing around with the Slate Verb Suite Classics, and i got to stress here, this is not paid for in any way by Slate. Uh, they don't know I'm making this video, but they're probably going to like it because I am getting some pretty interesting results with it, that's for sure. So I was messing around with here, and they have this preset, Gady 80s Drums. And what do they got here? They've got the FG16X, which is basically their take on the Neve 16X. And what we've got it set here is for the non-linears here. And I'm going to activate this. Let's see what we get. Oh, that sounds interesting. So well, the trick is, though, we have to clip the input here to get it to really do the thing. So here's my, uh, here's my send for the snare top, and I'm just going to send that over at maximum level to this verb, and let's see what happens now. Okay, that's getting interesting. That might be a little much on its own. In fact, I'm going to change the EQ on the snare now because I don't like what it's doing here. Add a little bit of 10K, but I want some thump. There we go. Try and find the thump on the sn snare. That's interesting right there. Let's throw that reverb on again. Let's hear that. Okay, that's getting somewhere interesting, that's for sure. It's not quite where I want it yet. I'm hearing a little bit too much ring on that snare, so I need something uh, with that I can you know, maybe take a little bit more surgical look at, and that's going to be the drum EQ 
from AIX DSP. This is uh, this thing's just great for getting rid of really annoying snare resonances and stuff that just seems to be a bit of a pain in the ass. That's for sure. I, I use the AIX drum EQ all the time, especially for exactly this kind of thing. Okay, it looks like our resonant frequency is right about here. Can tune that up a bit. There we go. That's one of the handiest plugins I've ever used, the AX Drum EQ. There we go. It took like two, two seconds to get rid of that honk on the snare, and we are good to go. Now let's start dialing this reverb in just a little bit more. If you look here, we can actually throw in a couple of other things, like we've got a width here. I like it kind of mono, to be honest with you. All right, that's not really good. So it's just, it's a matter of playing with the drum verb at this point. The other thing I'm going to do here is I am going to add a second drum verb, and this is going to go into the same folder here, and I'm just going to take that Valhalla plate that I had on originally, and I'm going to do another send to it. We're going to get a sound of this for a little bit, for a little bit more ambience, and then we've got the gated one. So we're actually using two reverbs here, one for a little bit of space and the other one for a little bit more of a cannon sound. This is what we got. Now, bear in mind here, yeah, uh, it's not just the top mic or the bottom mic. This is a combination of them both. I've got two of these right here going to one fader. Here's bottom mic, top mic. And they're both as a uh, folder to this snare top right here, 04. Add them both so we can control them as one. Just a matter of adjusting the fader to taste. How obnoxious, how canon-like do you want that snare to be? I really dig it. It adds a little bit of extra punch, a little bit of extra thwack, a little bit of extra oomph right into that snare that you're just not going to get pretty much with any other reverb. The trick is, once again, make sure you clip the input. Just send it in as hard as you possibly can. Bring it way up. That's getting a little bit more Robert Palmer addicted to love kind of sound there. We don't want to go that far. So the trick here is just play with the level till you get it in sitting underneath the mix to the point where if you mute it, you'll know it's gone, but it's not completely obnoxious either. So there you go. There's a real simple way to get an absolutely slamming snare sound in your mix. Just go check out the Slate Verb Suites Classics. And don't forget, sometimes maybe pushing things into the red might be a good idea. Anyway, if you found the video useful, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, hey, leave a comment below. Ask me a question. Ask me what you'd like to see. I'll be more than happy to make it. See you next time.